Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my tutorial on how to edit a featured content slider. A couple videos ago, I showed you how to make this featured content slider that's here on the screen, and since then, I've received tons of emails asking me how to edit it. It actually is extremely easy to edit, and at the end of this tutorial, you'll actually change that big, giant featured content tool into this nice, elegant tool that you see right here. And yes, both of these featured content sliders are cross-browser. And if you would go to browserlab.adobe.com, you can go in here and test all of your websites for free. Here's an example of what the slider would look like in Internet Explorer 6. Now, it's not animated, so the buttons don't work, so that kind of stinks, but it still gives you an idea that everything's laid out properly. And you could also check it out, for example, in Firefox 5 and any other different browsers that you want to check it out. So that's browserlab.adobe.com is a great way to check if your website content is cross-browser. So now I'm going to change this guy right here, this kind of bloated and huge, into this nice elegant guy. And it's going to be amazing just how easy it is to do this. So I'm going to shrink this down so you can actually see it on screen as I edit everything here. And I constantly get asked what tools I'm using. This is just Google Chrome over here on the left side of the screen. And right here is Text Wrangler, which is just a basic text editing tool. Now the only thing I had to do is, of course, these images are really, really big and these ones are really, really small. So I had to crop those images and that's exactly what I did. I just took the regular images that were for example 762 by 310 that was the original big ones 762 by 310 and I shrunk them down to 481 by 297 that's all I did so I cropped them all to exactly the same size and then I created this thumbnail that's right here this little tiny bluish green square so that is all I did in regards to changing the images. Now, what I need to do is go into the actual code and change it. And it's so simple, it's unbelievable. Pretty much don't have to touch anything up here. And whenever I created my new images, I just added a letter S at the end of them. So I'm just gonna go in here and point at different images. So I'm just gonna put a little S inside of there and another little S. Don't need to change anything else. I made this featured content slider to be extremely easy to use. And then down here, I just need to point at my new thumbnail. So I'm just gonna open this up, copy that name, paste that in there, right like that. And then I'm gonna copy this, paste it in. Instead of using the big giant thumbnails, I'm gonna use those little ones. And I did that for all four of the thumbnails. And then here for height, I decided to make this 10 instead of 50. Again, so that it doesn't cover up the entire screen. And I'm just gonna copy this and make changes. And this is in the index.html file, but you know, it's in wherever you want this to be. So, and all of the code is available underneath of this video. And that is it. Those are the only changes I needed to make. I needed to point at my four new images. You can put five, six, 10, and as many images as you want, just as long as you have a corresponding thumbnail for them. If you want those thumbnails to be there, those thumbnails don't even have to be there. If I file save that, now this isn't gonna look too nice because the styling's not right. Okay, so that's what you see there on the screen. Well, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna jump into the jQuery code of slider to JavaScript file. I'm going to make a couple little changes here. I decided, for example, that I didn't like the fact that the slider slid so quickly. So under auto slide interval, I'm just going to come down here and add six to that. So now it's going to change every six seconds instead of every four seconds. And because I don't need the dynamic arrows anymore, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change this to false. And I'm going to save that. And let's see what changes happen. Basically, the arrows went away. That's it. You might be able to see these little dots down here for the new thumbnails. So now what I need to do is go into the CSS code and change everything inside of there. And just so you guys understand, in the actual file that we have here, inside of this area, inside of this div, you don't just have the option of putting an image inside of here. You can put images, you can put text, you can put anything inside of here, just as long as it's in between these divs, and it will show up in there instead of the regular pictures. Anything. Everything works and it'll remain cross-browser as long as you don't break anything. So now I'm gonna jump over into the CSS code and continue making changes there, and that's code of slider dash 2.0 CSS. And again, there's not that many changes. I decided I didn't want my background to be black anymore. I wanted it to be white, so I'm gonna change this to FFF. Put a little semicolon there. And then of course, my images are no longer 762 in width, they're 481. So change that to 481, not too hard. And then you wanna scroll down here until you see nav thumbs. And there is nav thumbs right there. And now my height is no longer 50 pixels, so it's 10 pixels. So I'm gonna put in 10 right there. 
And then I need to decide how far I'm going to move these from the left. I'm going to come back that in a second. And then I'm going to scroll down here to where it says div code of slider wrapper arrows. And I'm going to change this to 481, but it really doesn't matter. I just do this just to keep everything consistent because those arrows aren't going to show up. And let's save it and see how that little tiny bit of a change affected this. All right, it's looking pretty sharp. And everything's snapped in, in there and looking really, really, really good. The only problem is you probably can't tell this, but this is a little bit off center. Let's zoom in just to see it. And there they're appearing again, but the only reason they're popping up there is because my dimensions aren't quite right on the thumbnails. And there you can see. So I'm going to go in there and correct that. And that's just a matter of moving those thumbnails around. Basically, I told you before I was going to come back to that. So I'm going to scroll back up to where nav thumbs is. And there's nav thumbs. And from the left side of the screen, instead of 230 pixels, I'm going to make this 180. Again, this is something you'd have to play with depending upon the size of your image area. And I'm going to move it to the left by 11 pixels. And right there, file saved it, reload it, and you can see that everything laid out perfectly. And just those couple little tiny changes have made extremely dramatic changes overall to the way the featured content tool works. So the big takeaway is the featured content tool I have for you is extremely easy to edit. And on top of that, if you want to check to make sure that it's cross-browser, check out the browserlab.adobe.com. It's free. You just have to sign up to get an account. Besides from that, it's great. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.